Well, everything's pretty peaceful on the canal here. Uh, on the good old Macclesfield Canal. Out for the usual afternoon trot round with the pups. And uh, there's not a lot happening. Although it has to be said that even in ordinary times, there's not much happening on this bit of the canal. Occasionally gets busy with one or two folks walking dogs like me. Um, but on the whole, it's always a nice quiet space to come and uh, chill out, is that what we say? Uh, and empty your mind. And just breathe a little. So, good place, love the canals. A canal water running in my veins, I'm absolutely sure of that. This is something I really love about it. And of course, my family, the Trusswells, were were boats people. Anybody seen the trucks on the roads? Trusswell haulage? Well that grew out of a canal company. So my forebears used to live on stretches of water like this. Inside the boats. Over on the east side of the country, on the Trent there, and on those canals into, well, the canal, should I say, into the middle of Sheffield, I forget what it's called. Um, I always feel very at home next to the canal, and off go the dogs to see if they can catch themselves a geese, which they're never gonna, they're never gonna succeed at. Now I'm the barking at the horses in the field. And they're completely unmoved. Yeah. So everything is normal. Uh, uh, excuse me, you two. Come here. Max, calm down a bit. Yes, you. Come here. Yes, behave yourselves. Just behave, Just behave yourselves, I've told you. Hello there. There's always something for them to get overexcited about. But catching Canada geese, you're not going to do that in a month of Sundays or more. Da, 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 da. It's just not happening. Now, if I touch that, does it come around the other way? No, it doesn't, does it? I thought it flipped front to back. I've forgotten the trick. I don't know what the trick is, but. Never mind. If I do that, <laughs> I suppose that does the trick in a slightly inaccurate way. Anyway, so I hope you, everybody can find you know it must be hard if you don't have tiny kids anymore. Uh, that privilege has come my way only twice, and not at the same time, as my friends and family will know. But uh, our youngest is now 13, so things do get a bit lively at home, but I suspect for many people, a lot livelier than what we have it at the moment. Not an easy time to have youngsters, um, particularly if they start closing schools and things just to add to the problems that people already have. It's a tough time right enough. And as I walk along here by the still waters, no, I'm not gonna break into song before, before you start turning off, reaching for the off button. Oh no, he's gonna sing. Um, I do think that, uh, oh, there's a boat turning up there. I do think there's a message. You know, there's an upside to this whole story. And I think the upside is that everybody is being reminded that with all this technology and it's all very clever and, you know, a big part of our lives these days, me included, um, with all that we know and with all the science, and I love science, I think it's a wonderful thing. I think scientists are just fantastic. 
people that understand things in greater depth than I'll ever know. Um, you know, and with all the talk about climate change, and yes, I do agree that we need to look after the planet, and wildlife and everything. We're called to be stewards of the planet, you know, but look after it, we don't own it. But that's the key thing. We're being reminded that we don't own it. We do not own this beautiful planet Earth. Look at that sky up there. Some people just say, oh, it's a, a grey sky. And yes, indeed it is, quite grey. But it isn't just grey if you look at it carefully. And up above the clouds, of course, it's bright sunshine. And blue skies and beyond that, the heavens which go on forever. Uh, so, I just want to share a bit of calmness, I think, with people. I'm not, as an individual, naturally calm. It's not something that comes easy to me, really. I uh, get wound up, as Jan will tell you, at sometimes the most ridiculous things. Because I'm human. I'm full of faults. But that's just part of being human. Oh, this is nice. I'm glad a boat's coming around the corner. I can see we can watch it go through the bridge. It's quite a big video of this, it's sort of here. How many minutes? Seven minutes? Wow. That'll take some uploading. How much power will it use to upload this video to the YouTube servers, wherever they sit out in some anonymous shed? Yeah. We can't take things for granted. And people might be used to be, you know, for, I mean, Mum always taught me to say, Whatever it was about the future, he said, you always say all being well or God willing. And I'm very, very grateful for that uh, bit of advice from my mum and my dad, really, particularly my mum. Because you just don't know what's around the corner. Uh, I spent a lot of time and, and some money to a degree, 300 quid or something, preparing for the upcoming walk. And then suddenly the walk's off and uh, external circumstances so it just shows and because of the smallest little creature tiniest tiny little creature deciding that we're gonna have to do things differently now shut up as the boat comes past isn't it it's beautiful Bar boats are a superb builder of narrowboats in Poynton in Cheshire. Some of the best on the network. In fact, one year at the Crick Boat Show, they won best in show uh, for their number 100 boat, which was a full 70 footer. Um, it's nice to see some traffic on the canal. I'm wondering if the canal has opened up at Bollington there. Canal has been shut while they've been rebuilding the entire thing just underneath Clarence Mill where my friends at Canal Side Radio are. They've been reconstructing the whole whole bottom of the canal as the whole thing collapsed. So I'm guessing, because we've seen a bit more movement, that uh, the canal is open again, which is great. I would love to live on a narrowboat. Crikey. I would just love to do that. We had a share in a boat for a couple of years, two or three years, and I really miss it. It was a, a lot of work at the time because the boat was going through one or two traumas, which I won't bore you with, but I really do love the canals, and I think it's to do with the fact that it's in my roots. Um, I just knocked his engine down a bit to pass the boats that are more just around the corner. But that man's a good boater, he knows what he's doing. Uh, people who live aboard narrow boats never appreciate somebody coming along at full throttle and rocking the uh, dishes off the racks. That never goes down well. Anyways, I was going to do this on Periscope until I've noticed, of course, this is my friend Ricky's uh, iPhone. 
which I've been testing and getting used to. I really like it. It's a superb device, and apart from not being able to do my offline calendar for work, it does everything else superbly. I love the little screen, I love the fact you can use it with one hand. It is a classic, classic piece of design and engineering. Uh, and no, I'm not going to get onto that subject again because we did that on, on Facebook the other day. So, so no, I'm not repeating myself. I refuse. And that's the end of it. I quite like these um, new apartments that have been put up here uh, uh, on the canal side here. Um, with my architectural hat on, um, I think they've done a pretty good job. And, <laughs> Strangely, these were built by a company, the only company I've ever been sacked by, <laughs> which is about 20 years ago. Oh, it was because I didn't like the CAD system that we were using at the time. But uh, that apart, I think they've made a really good job of these. I think the proportions are good. I like those rendered sections and the, uh, the upper story um, cladding, you know, between the top of the brickwork and the roof there. I think that really, really works well. And the balconies, and the whole thing's got a you know, because they built them on a budget, because they were very good, this particular developer, at building to a budget. But I've been inside one of them, actually, because a friend lives in one of these. Um, I think they've done a good job. You know, they could have been done a lot cheaper and a lot worse, in my view. And I think they've improved the canal side here about no end. So 10 out of 10 to that developer, even if they did sack me all those years ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's walk along here a bit further. I can't do much time. This has gone to 12 minutes already. It's already twice as long as I intended it to be, but hey, that's me. Uh, all the moorings are taken up at the moment. Is he parking up there? No, it's not. It's going to be moored up here myself once on, a, on our boat. Brought uh, the narrow boat here and one of these uh, mooring positions for three days. Well, I have to say some of these boats have been here a lot longer than the permitted three days, but hey, Canal and River Trust are nice people. Uh, they enforce when they have to, but not when they don't. And that's fine by me. Them up there, you see. Three days. But if I was on a boat, I'd probably be doing exactly the same and pushing the curve a bit, so hey, you know. One can't point the finger. Oh, there's people on the bridge there looking back this way, so they're going to notice quite quickly that I'm doing videos and things. So I'm going to turn this off when I get to the end of the pontoon, and I'll turn it back the other way so you can have a final look. Anyway. There you go. There's the flats. Looking rather fantastic. And there's the dog looking tired. Oh, he's not tired, he's just, he's just making out that he's tired. Well, let's have a look at this board here. Provided by the uh, Ackersfield Canal Society. In memory of a Mr. Lees, a voter who loved this place. Well, Mr. Lees, RIP. God rest your soul, my friend. I think I understand why, because I really like this place as well. Anyway, that's it. I'll catch you all later. And if you've watched it, I hope you enjoyed it and feel a little bit more peaceful. Cheers for now.